show you the things which must take place. That's what we need. We need a heavenly perspective of the things that are going on in the world around us. The things that the Word of God foretold us would come to pass. Those things which must take place, my friends. Those things which are taking place even now as I speak. That is what this broadcast is all about. Discussing the issues of the day. Discerning the times in which we live from a biblical perspective and worldview. Good afternoon, everybody. What you are about to hear is is the fusion of heart, mind, and soul. And welcome to a brand new edition of Open Up the Doors. I am your host, Andy White, and I am also streaming live on my Open Up the Doors Facebook page. If you want to hop on over uh, and, and, and see see the pretty face <laughs> behind the microphone, go on, go on over to facebook.com slash uh, faithfm91.7. That's facebook.com slash faithfm91.7. And join in the conversation over there on Facebook Live. Let me know where you're listening from. Wow, I see somebody's listening from South Africa. Hey, greetings, Greetings to you over there in South Africa. Thanks for joining in. God bless you. Anyway, um, for those of you who are on Facebook Live, if you never liked the page, please like the page. And also, please share it, share it, share it. Oh, man, Facebook has been really, really, really uh, squelching the numbers, squelching the people outreach uh, on all us Christians and all of us conservatives. Uh, I, you know, we, we're aware of this, but it's getting really, really bad. I need you guys to share this into your streams as much as possible. It's the only way we're going to get around the Facebook uh, gatekeepers and algorithms. But it's a warfare. But if you'd like to, uh, let me let me move on and leave that aside. Hey, listen, if you're outside of the uh, Faith FM uh, broadcast area, we are streaming over the Internet, of course, at HamptonsChristian.com. Uh, if you're if you're sitting in your office and you can and you're at the computer there or whatever, you can just listen to Faith FM streaming twenty four seven. But the best way to really listen is to get the uh, the Faith FM apps. They're free. You get the app for the Android. Get the app for the Apple uh, platforms over at HamptonsChristian dot com. Best way to listen to Faith FM twenty four seven. And if you hear uh, during the course of this broadcast, if you hear any strange sounds or groanings. Or me saying, ow, um, hey, folks, I could use your prayers today. I've been dealing with a really um, bad, I got two herniated discs in the base of my neck. Uh, I've had them for a while. Uh, I went to PT back in the wintertime, and it was and it really worked. I haven't had any problems with it. Uh, but unfortunately, about a week and a half ago, it just flared up out of nowhere for no apparent reason. And I've been really dealing with a lot of pain. Uh, in the back of my neck. So I'm just saying that to say, hey, I'm plugging through, I'm plodding along, and I'm going to get through this broadcast because I got a lot to share. But I would appreciate your prayers for healing uh, in the back of this uh, this neck here. Really could use some a touch of the Lord in healing. But praise God, There's I got a lot on my plate, I always do, but there's something, a bunch of things I want to share today because there's something that has been concerning me lately. No, no, actually, that's putting it mildly. It's been more than concerning me. I should say it's been more like it's been angering me lately. And it's to be seeing more and more anti-Zionist, anti-Semitic tropes, along with these blatantly anti-Semitic conspiracy theories being passed around 
I expect stuff like that from from Nazis and from uh, uh, bigots. But here's what's angering me, and here's what is concerning me. I'm seeing this stuff coming from uh, these these uh, anti-Semitic conspiracy theories being passed around by professing Christians within some of these social media Christian groups. I go on I go on some of these Christian groups, and some of the things I see in regards to Israel, folks, it's been alarming me. And there is a whole lot of absurd and absolute nonsense that is being peddled and believed by more and more so-called professing Christians, and it is alarming. And I want to call some of it out today, and I want to give you warning to watch out for it and to be careful that you don't fall into its insidious deception and malicious lies because as astounding and it is truly astounding. As crazy as it sounds to a rational mind, there are those out there that would have you to believe that the nation of Israel is not really legitimately Israel. There is this huge lie being perpetrated. This lie is being perpetrated by some cults like the black Hebrew Israelites. It's being perpetrated by pal- the, by the pro-Palestinian lobby, by people like Ilhan Omar and Rashid, uh, Rashida Tlaib. But most alarming, it's being perpetrated, even as I said a moment ago, in some so-called Christian circles and groups. This lie, my friends, it seems to be infecting more and more people. And it's simply this, that the modern-day Jewish people living in Israel aren't real Jews, that they are quote-unquote fake Jews. When I first heard that, I thought it was just some oddball saying something really stupid. It is really stupid. But I'm telling you, I'm seeing this more and more and more coming from people. This accusation, this, this allegation that the people of Israel, the Jewish people, are fake Jews with no real genetic connection to the ancient Israelites. And these anti-Semites, anti-Zionists, and, I'm gonna, and that's what they are. I'm going to call it as I see it, my friends. But these anti-Zionists claim that the modern-day state of Israel is merely a man-made state created by a supremacist, racist, Zionist cabal that want to control the world. Now, some of this stuff's been around for a long time. It's not new. But like I said, I'm alarmed to see it gaining credence within Christian circles. And no matter how many times and no matter how many ways you try to tell these people and prove to them that writings like the Protocols of Zion are fallacious, and have been thoroughly debunked, yet they still choose to believe this nonsense. But I want to tell you something before I go any further. Though they may try to dismiss Israel as some kind of an accidental quirk of geopolitics or some kind of a nefarious creation of globalists, I want to tell you, folks, the fact irrefutably remains. The fact is simply this, that it is God who raises up one nation and puts down another. That's what the Bible says. God raises up one nation and he puts down another according to his own will and purposes. And it's really a moot point and it's really an irrelevant point to be tautological of how a certain nation might come about through the geopolitical maneuverings of men and of nations. It is God who raises up one and puts down another. It is his prophetic word that will stand and his word which is being accomplished in our world today. The God, oh, I worship you, Jesus. The God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob is in control of the prophetic schema, my friends. And he has performed And he is performing his word just as he said he would in accordance with the many, many prophetic proclamations of the prophets. And today I want to go through uh, 
some of the promises that God's made to Israel. I want to go through some of the, the nonsensical theories that's being uh, uh, alleged against Israel and God's purposes. I want to talk about the promises and, 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 and the, uh, the, 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 the promises and the people and the purposes that God has. Because the long and short of it is this, my friends, Israel exists. I love those two words. I use those two words. I use that phrase all the time. Israel exists, and Israel is real, and the Jewish people are really back in their homeland according to the words of the prophets. Now, I realize, uh, hmm, I realize that to most sane people, what I just said is a glaringly obvious statement. I mean, Israel's a nation? Israel's back in the land? Brother Andy, that's 71-year-old news. Yeah, I know. I said at the top of the show that some of the stuff is really astounding. Nevertheless, there are too many Jewish bashing anti-Semites creeping into the church with a real animus towards Israel. And they're even calling those of us, like your humble host here, I am an unequivocal, unashamed, unabashed supporter of Israel. But of course, I'm not of God, according to them. I'm not of God, and I'm deceived of the devil. And those, those Christian Zionists, it's a deception. No, my friends, it's not, because God is a Zionist. Oh, let those who hate Zion be turned back and ashamed, the psalmist said. I don't want to go on a bunny trail with that. But to the contrary, to the contrary, The modern state of Israel is both miraculous and a testament. It is a testament to the faithfulness of a covenant-keeping God. It is irrefutable, my friends. It is irrefutable that the Bible contains numerous, specific, and undeniable promises from God that he would bring the scattered nation of Israel back into the land of Israel. And there are dozens and dozens and dozens of restoration promises and prophecies throughout the prophets. Now, I obviously cannot go through all of them in this broadcast, but there are a few that I want to highlight that are of a particular importance. Because all the way back, all the way back in Deuteronomy, God promised Moses and the people And you can read this over there in Deuteronomy chapter 30, verses 3 and 5, where God promises, after going through a litany of blessing and curses, after going through uh, the, the, the judgments that would come upon Israel if they disobeyed and the blessings if they kept, after all of that, God says to his people, the Lord your God will gather you again from all the nations where he has scattered you. Even if you have been banished to the most distant land under the heavens, from there the Lord your God will gather you and bring you back. He will bring you to the land that belonged to your ancestors, and you will take possession of it. That is a 3,500-year-old or plus promise that God spoke to Israel while they were still in the wilderness. The prophet Isaiah, chapter 11, verse 12. God will set up a banner for the nations and will assemble the outcasts of Israel and gather together the dispersed of Judah from the four corners of the earth. I believe that was accomplished in 1948. The banner for the nations was the United Nations. And Isaiah says the same thing or similar thing over there in uh, another verse that I'll get to in a moment. But Ezekiel says this, Ezekiel 11:17, And I'm just rattling off some of the promises of a restored Israel back to the land after a great dispersion. There are, like I said, there are dozens and dozens and dozens. But Ezekiel said, I will gather you from the people, assemble you from the countries, plural, where you have been scattered, and I will give you the land of Israel. (laughs) End of conversation as far as I'm concerned. End of debate as far as I'm concerned. But there's more in Ezekiel. 
God says, say to Israel, thus says the Lord God, surely I will take the children of Israel from among the nations, wherever they have gone, and I will gather them from every side and bring them into their own land, and I will make them one nation in the land. Remember, back in biblical days, there was there was two kingdoms. There was a northern kingdom and there was a southern kingdom. There was a northern kingdom of Ephraim, a southern kingdom of Judah. Samaria being the capital of the northern kingdom and Jerusalem being the capital of the southern kingdom. But look at this verse in Ezekiel 37, 21 through 22. I will make them one nation in the land on the mountains of Israel and one king shall be king over them all. And that king, my friends, he's coming back. Trust me. But Ezekiel goes on. It says that they shall no longer be two nations nor shall they ever be divided into two kingdoms again. What do we see today, if not exactly that? No, that's exactly what we see. We do not see a northern kingdom and a southern kingdom. We don't see a, a, a Samaria as a capital, and Jerusalem is the eternal capital. There isn't a northern kingdom of Ephraim and a southern kingdom of Judah. There is one united nation with Jerusalem as its capital, just as was prophesied by Ezekiel. Then we come to the prophet Joel. For behold, in those days and at that time, what days? Well, if you read the context of Joel, it's in the latter days. Joel chapter 3, verses 1 and 2. For behold, in those days and at that time, when I bring back the captives of Judah and Jerusalem, I will also gather all nations and bring them down to the valley of Jehoshaphat, and I will enter into judgment with them there on account of my people, my heritage Israel, whom they have scattered among the nations. Let's look at this verse a little bit here, folks, because you need to understand this. Joel says, for behold, in those days and at that time, when I bring back the captives of Judah and Jerusalem, I will also gather all nations. There's a concurrent thing here. The last day's judgment on the nations could not even begin until Israel was back in their land. That's another reason why it's called the fig tree generation. Another reason why I believe we are living in the fig tree generation. When the nation of Israel, the people of Israel, the ethnic race of Israel has come back into their land and the, and the leaves are putting forth their blossoms. And Jesus said, when you see this happen, know that this generation, this generation shall not pass away. It's the fig tree generation. It's the generation of Jews that God said would never come to an end. And this, this, before I run ahead of myself, there is uh, one of my favorite restoration uh, um, verses is in Amos because it's very definitive on several points. The prophet Amos prophesied, quote, in, in Amos chapter 9, verses 14 and 15, listen, I will bring back the captives of my people Israel. They shall build the waste cities and inhabit them. That's exactly what they did. They shall plant vineyards and drink wine from them. That's exactly what they did. They shall also make gardens and eat fruit from them. That's exactly what they did. And this is the important point. I, God, will plant them in their land, and no longer shall they be pulled up from the land that I have given them. They will never be uprooted again, God says in Amos chapter 9. And this passage is important because those who think that it was the post-Babylonian restoration of Israel, that that was the fulfillment of these of these uh, Isra- Isra- Israeli restoration promises, excuse me. They got to explain why Israel was in fact uprooted again in 70 AD, because God says, when I bring them back to the land, they're never going to be uprooted again, never. And to state that they were uprooted in 70 AD because of the rejection of Christ, it doesn't answer the question. Did God break his promise? God said he would restore them to the land and they would never be uprooted again. Or rather, and here's the real answer to the question, the prophecies, in fact, were not pertaining to the post-Babylonian exile because 500 years later they were uprooted. But the promises were given for the latter time, namely the end times. Folks, let's be perfectly clear. Those who want to discount and dismiss the modern 
nation of Israel as having nothing to do with God's purposes today. Like I've heard many say that, but they do so with this, this, this disregard, a willful disregard of the prophetic scriptures, in my opinion. They reject these clear promises of God to Israel based solely upon their own ill-informed prejudices and presuppositions. And rather than humble themselves and admit to the fact that their erroneous interpretation is wrong, they then postulate this absurd notion that the modern state of Israel isn't real. They postulate the insanity that those living in Israel, they aren't real Jews and they have no genetic connection to ancient Jews. Hence the term fake Jews. I'm going to get into that as this program. I'm going to get into that as this program progresses my friends i'm going to show you where some of this came from in the next in the next block but there's something that i've seen a few people do more than a few and it really angers me there are some real real haters claiming to be christians ripping jesus's words out of context in revelation and misapplying them egregiously misapplying them to israel you know in Revelation chapter 2, where Jesus is speaking to the church in Smyrna, and Jesus says, I know the blasphemy of those who say they are Jews and are not, but a, but they are a synagogue of Satan. Now, folks, let me tell you something. Jesus wasn't talking about their biology. He was talking about a false theology. And I find it appalling and disgusting when I see or hear a Christian use that passage of Scripture to attack the state of Israel or Jews in general. It is despicable. And I've seen that occur more than once or twice. These abuses of Scripture who would apply this verse to the state of Israel are nothing less than anti-Semites, and they're couching their bigotry in an egregious theological paradigm. And if that offends you, I'm sorry, but your bigotry offends me. But I'm not a snowflake, and I'm going to speak the truth, and I'm not going to quiet down or shut down. Oh, no, not at all, my friends. I'm, I'm, too, I, I'm just too stubborn for that. But like all things biblical, these folks that promulgate this nonsense, they're groping around in the dark like blind men in a graveyard at midnight. All the while, the glaring light and reality of Israel's miraculous existence. (laughs) Israel's miraculous existence is burning as brightly as the midday sun. It is truly astonishing. But I'll be right back in a moment, folks. He is glorious with Jesus culture. Stick around. I'll be back with more. Glorious by Jesus culture. Katie Torwalt in particular. Welcome back. You will listen to Open Up the Doors here on Faith FM. Andy White, it is the fusion of heart, mind, and soul. And I want to jump back into uh, what I've been sharing regarding uh, Israel and the things that are going on. I got someone on Facebook that uh, said this. That, that was lingering longer than I thought it would linger, that music there. <laughs> but... um. I got a couple of comments here on Facebook Live. If you're just joining in over the over the radio broadcast on the internet, I am over the internet. I'm gonna stop cutting my words short here, but I'm so rushed for time sometimes. But I am streaming live on my Open Up the Doors Facebook page. Join in the conversation over there at Facebook.com/slash/FaithFM91.7. Let me know where you are listening from. Some of the comments there. Somebody, friend of mine, Facebook friend, uh, Gene Ann said. Speaking about the things I'm talking about here, this is not a new thing. Speaking about the anti-Semitism, speaking about uh, how there are those who are trying to uh, 
postulate the idea that God has nothing to do with Israel in this day and age, that Israel has nothing to do with uh, the ancient Israelis. She said, I was raised in a mainstream preterist church, which always gave the impression, or said outright, that there is no relation between Israel of the Old Testament and present-day Israel. They did not see the people of present-day Israel as real Jews. And that is exactly the lie that I'm coming against in this broadcast. Another friend on Facebook said, I was, same thing, I was raised in a church that taught that Israel has no relevance, uh, relevance for today, and that God did not have any special plans with the Jews and were done with them since they rejected the Messiah. And yes, you are correct. That is wrong. That is absolutely wrong. I... To add to those comments that are on my Facebook stream right now, I saw someone comment the other day on a post that I had put up on another group, and their comment regarding Israel said this, quote, there is no such thing as an Israelite anymore. They ceased to exist. The people there today are Israelis, not Israelites. So according to this guy, Israelites, quote-unquote, ceased to exist. That is biblical ignorance to the core. That statement is biblically ignorant at the very least. But unfortunately, it's, it's, it's exasperated by some of these newfangled theories of anti-Semites or even self-loathing Jews like Shlomo Zand, whom I will get to in a second. But before I get to Shlomo Zand and where some of these ideas came from, I want to definitively, I want to definitively, excuse me, and biblically answer that erroneous statement, quote, there is no such thing as an Israelite anymore because they ceased to exist. Well, let's let's hear what the Bible has to say about that kind of a statement. Let's hear what the what God had to say about that. In Jeremiah chapter 46, verses 27 and 28, God says this, "But do not fear, O my servant Jacob, and do not be dismayed, O Israel, for behold, I will save you from afar, and your offspring, who? Your offspring those who are genetically connected to you, those who are, well, I can't say anything better than that, who share your DNA. I will save you from afar and your offspring from the land of their captivity. Jacob shall return, have rest and be at ease. No one shall make him afraid. Do not fear, O Jacob, my servant, says the Lord, for I am with you. Now listen real carefully those of you who believe this insane nonsense that Israel has ceased to exist, because this is the word of God. And I believe in a promise-keeping, ever-faithful, a God who cannot lie, covenant-keeping God. He says here in Jeremiah forty-six twenty-eight, as plain as the nose is on our faces, your face and my face, do not fear, for I am with you. For I will make a complete end of all the nations to which I have driven you. But I will not make a complete end of you. Bam! Mic drop. End of discussion. I'm going to make an end to the other nations, but I'm never going to make an end to your offspring. I'm never going to make a complete end of you. Yeah, God's going to chasten Israel. Yeah, God's going to chasten his people, just like he chastens me and you. But he is not, he's promised to never eradicate them. But just in case you want a little bit more, because the Bible talks about two or three witnesses, we also have the prophet Amos, chapter 9. Behold, the eyes of the Lord are on the sinful kingdom, and I will destroy it from the face of the earth. You see, God destroyed Israel and Judah in 70 AD from the face of the earth. Except that's not where the verse ends. The eyes of the Lord are on the sinful kingdom, and I will destroy it from the face of the earth. Yet I will not utterly destroy the house of Jacob, says the Lord. 
And yet I keep hearing all these references to fake Jews who aren't really Jews. I keep hearing and seeing this phrase more and more from people. Who are these fake Jews? Well, they're certainly not the Jewish descendants of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob who were living in the land of Israel. I can tell you that much. But I got to get into this. Man, I've got so much here that I, I can't, I pee. I'm looking at my clock. I'm saying, man, I haven't even gotten to the heart of this yet. Where is, where is this idea coming from? Well, one thing, folks, there is this, this, there is this myth out there, this Turkic Khazar myth. I don't know if you ever heard about the Khazars, but there's this myth going, going on that's out there that's, go, that's gaining in popularity. But I want to tell you something. Calling it a myth is putting it quite mildly, if you ask me, because the Khazar theory is a purely malicious fabrication created for the sole purpose of delegitimizing the Jewish nation. Where do these people get this nonsense from? Well, sadly, unfortunately, they get it in large measure from books like, quote, this is the name of the book written by Shlomo Zand, The Invention of the Jewish People. This Khazar thesis has gained momentum, has g- gained a global prominence ever since Professor Shlomo Zand of Tel Aviv, yeah, a professor of history at Tel Aviv University, published his book in 2008, The Invention of the Jewish People. In his book, Zand argues that the quote-unquote Jewish, Jewish people are an invention forged out of myths and fictitious history to justify Jewish ownership of the land of Israel. Folks, let me tell you something. It's actually his book that was forged out of myths and fictitious history. Zand's book has been resoundingly has been resoundedly debunked by scholars throughout academia. And one of the one of the many of the erroneous claims in Zan's book is that the Ashkenazi Jews are actually descended from the Turkic Khazars. And the Khazars were not a biological or genetically Jewish people. But Zan says they converted to Judaism en masse. He he he, he has this, this very, very specious and hardly zero evidence that the Khazar kingdom converted to Judaism. But they weren't Jews. They were converts, if at all. However, however, I just said he's been debunked by scholars throughout academia. This book has been conduct has been debunked on Many, many levels. Uh, another history, pro- pro- excuse me, Professor Shaw Stamper concluded that there is no evidence, zero, to support Zan's assertion. Quote, such a conversion of the Khazari people, even though it's a wonderful story, but it never happened, Stamper said. Stamper, who was an expert in Jewish history, analyzed material from various fields but found no reliable source for the claim that the Khazars, a multi-ethnic kingdom that included Iranians, Turks, Slavs, and Circassians, uh, converted to Judaism. Quote again, there never was a conversion by the Khazar king or the Khazar elite, he said. The conversion of the Khazars is a myth with no factual basis. Furthermore, Professor Stanford said this, as a historian, I'm naturally worried by the misuse of history. I think history should be removed from political discussions, but anyone who nevertheless, nevertheless wants to use history must at least present the correct facts. And in this case, reflecting back to uh, Shlomo Zan's book, in this case, the facts are that the Khazars didn't convert the Jews aren't descendants of the Khazars, and the contemporary political problems between Israelis and Palestinians must be dealt with on the basis of current reality, not on the basis of a fictitious past. Who is this Shlomo Zand? Like I said a moment ago, Professor Zand is a professor of history at Tel Aviv University. I would never want to be in this guy's class. Because if he's a professor of history, maybe maybe we should call him a, a professor of re, the rewriting of history. But I looked this guy up. I did a little research on the on this guy, because not only is his credentials at being a history somewhat questionable, you know what Professor Slomo Zand really is? He's a self-loathing 
atheist Jew. He also wrote a book titled How I Stopped Being a Jew. Oh, and by the way, did I forget to mention he's also a hardcore communist lefty? Now, I'm not making that up. I'm telling you, I looked this guy up. You can look it up. Just Google Shlomo. What's his name? Shlomo Sand. You, see, you know what I was thinking about this? It, it, it seems like Israel has the same problem that America has with these communist leftists in their universities. In, in America, we have the, the America-hating, blame America first crowd leftist professors that, that want to blame and hate America and indoctrinate their students. And it seems like they got the same thing in Israel. They got the, the leftists in Israel hating and blaming the Israelis. Blame Israel first crowd. I got to tell you one thing, folks. The, 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 the mold that these leftists come out of is something to behold. Zan says this, quote, the affinity between Jews and the Holy Land, Zan has said, is I don't think that the religious affinity to the land gives you historical right. Well, you're wrong, Professor Zan, because whether you want to believe it or not, God gave them the land as part of an everlasting covenant. It's called the Abrahamic Covenant. So in your, so your opinion and your communistic atheism and your self-loathing Jewishness, you've got no say in the matter of what God's doing. He goes on to say that, quote-unquote, nevertheless, he says he supports Israel's existence. This is a funny, this is a, this is a really funny quote. He supports Israel's existence, not because of historical right, but because of the fact that it exists today. Ah, yes, Israel does exist. At least we've got some reality going on there, Mr. Zand. And and that, according to him, Israel exists, and any effort to destroy it will bring new tragedies. (laughs) He's perfectly right. Any effort to destroy Israel. Israel and Jerusalem will bring new tragedies, and they're coming. It's called the time of Jacob's trouble, but I can't get into that right now. But I want to tell you something, folks, and Professor Zand, Israel does exist, and that ought to be enough reason to bring you to faith in the God of the Bible, who keeps his covenant and his promises. Zand, uh, I, he, he, he rejects, there was, there was a lot of genetic studies, I'm going to get into that in the next block, about some of the genetic studies, but Zand's He's criticized the genetic studies. When the genetic studies came out showing him that his theories were flat out wrong and fallacious, he said this. Um, where, where's this quote? Uh, da, 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 I'm, look, I'm looking through my notes here. In, 20, in 2010, uh, a guy by the name of Harry Oster, a professor of genetics at the Albert Einstein College of Medicine, announced the results of a DNA study showing, quote, powerful genetic markers of Jewish ancestry. I'm going to get into this in the next block. But when, 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 when Zand was confronted with this, he makes this statement. He says, um, where is this statement? I have this quote. I can't find it now. All right, I, I, he had a quote basically saying that Hitler would have loved, oh yeah, here it is. Uh, Zan told Science Magazine after this came out that, quote, Hitler would have certainly been very pleased. And he, he poo-pooed the discovery of the genetic markers of the Jewish people. And he just pawned it off that, oh, Hitler would have liked that. The guy, like, I, I don't even know what to, what to make of this. Again, a leftist communist self-loathing Jew but I, I want to say it again the Kazar theory myth has been debunked by scholars across the board on several major grounds it's been debunked on the linguistic record the historical record and the DNA record and these records show that there is absolutely no connection no matter what you might see on Facebook or on the internet there is no connection it's been debunked between the Khazars and the Ashkenazi Jews of Europe this guy this this is a really interesting thing and I'm, I'm going to quote this one thing before I get to a break this guy by the name of Alexander Bider is a linguist and he's author of, of several books on Jewish names and in regard to this Khazar theory he says this Historiography and linguistics are not formal disciplines like mathematics or logic, so nothing can be proved definitively. 
Therefore, this allows for the introduction of what we might call junk science. It's basically saying Zan's book was junk science, a category to which the Kazarian hypothesis belongs. Alexander Beider goes on to say, the theory is absolutely without evidence. As any historian will tell you, generations of Jews, like generations of any people, leave historical traces behind them. These traces come in multiple forms. For starters, people leave behind them historical documents and archaeological data. Predictably, archaeological evidence about the widespread existence of Jews in Kazaria is almost non-existent. While a series of independent sources does testify to the existence in the 10th century of a few Jews in the kingdom, that's about it. And the Kazarian state was destroyed by the Russians in the mid-960s. Not 1960s, the 960s. So therefore, what he's getting at is Judaism wasn't even widespread before it was destroyed in Kazaria. The long and short of it is this, as I go to my break, folks. These academics, academics can argue it out all they want. But the fact of the matter is this. Israel exists, and it exists because God has kept his promise to regather his people back into the land he promised their forefathers. And this was done not because they were pure, either morally or spiritually, but this was done to vindicate his name and to show the world his glory. And I'm going to have a lot more to say in a short time to say it when I come back, but I got to break away for a, a break right now. Stick around, folks. I'll be right back. Here's Jason Upton with the Lion of Judah. And the Lion of Judah is coming back. He's coming back to be that one king over the restored nation of Israel. Oh, yeah, we got some stuff that we got to get through. Stick around, folks. I'll be right back. All they hear is the lion, Judah. of heart, mind, and soul. This is Open Up the Doors with Andy White here on Faith FM. WEGB 90.7 and 93.3 in that peak. WEGQ 91.7 and quad. Thanks for hanging out with me on its rainy afternoon here on the east end of Long Island anyway. I've had some downpours all day long. But hey, thanks for, for tuning in to this edition of Open Up the Doors. If you're just joining in, I am streaming live on my Open Up the Doors Facebook page over at facebook.com slash faithfm91.7. If you join in over the conversation over there, and I hope you do, please let us know where you are watching from. If you'd like to email me, you can email me at ajwhite777 at iCloud.com. It's ajwhite777 at iCloud.com. As I mentioned, I'm going to get right back into it because I only got a precious, precious few minutes left. And I've got uh, I've got about another hour's worth of notes here for, for this broadcast. I'm going to have to whittle it down somehow. I hate doing that. But as I stated earlier in the broadcast, I saw one Facebook comment that said Israelites don't exist anymore. They are Israelis. And I gave a few scripture references to refute that. But here's another one out of Jeremiah, because this is the attitude that I see in some of these in some of these preterist camps and some of these anti-Zionist and anti-Semitic camps. But Jeremiah 33 says this, and it's important, folks. Jeremiah says this, God is speaking, thus they have despised my people as if they should no more be a nation before them. Thus says the Lord, if my covenant is not with day and night, and if I have not appointed the ordinances of heaven and earth, then I will cast away the descendants of Jacob and David, my servant. He's talking two things there. He's talking about, he's talking about the, the uh, Abrahamic promises and the Davidic covenant as well. I can't get into all that now, but God is saying this, <laughs> those covenants are everlasting and my covenant with, with Jacob and my covenant with Abraham and my covenant with David are eternal. And if anyone thinks that, that I'm going to destroy the nation or destroy their descendants, they're wrong. I'm paraphrasing. Let me get back to what God said in Jeremiah. He says, I will not take any of his descendants to be rulers over the uh, uh, 
the descendants of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, for I will cause their captives to return, and I will have mercy on them. And it's about the descendants. It's about the offspring. It's about the DNA, my friends, because those who are perpetrating the lie of the Khazars are saying that the Jewish race has ceased to exist. But scientists have discovered a gene. And again, this was even reported in the New York Times a few years ago. Scientists have discovered a gene which can be traced from all the way back to Aaron, the first high priest, the Cohen, the high priest of Israel. A gene has been found that resides upon the Y chromosome. I don't have time to get into all of it. But the bottom line is this. Despite 2,000 years of this, uh, the diaspora, modern science has now proved that the biblical concept of the Kohanim has genetic evidence which has allowed what Israel is doing right now to raise up a, the, the, the priests again, the Aaronic priests, the Levitical priests. Now, I understand we don't recognize that as Christians, but that's not the point. They don't understand that. And God is using this to bring about his last day's uh, purposes Yes, my friends, Israel exists, and they are not fake Jews. They're not fake Levitical priests. You know, the Jews were unusually adept at tracking their genealogy, and it was precisely because of the Messianic promises regarding the lineage of David and the promise that the scepter would not depart from Judah until Shiloh comes. Let me tell you something. I got to wrap this up, and I wish I didn't have to because I got a ton of stuff here that's just really pertinent. But folks, I've got personally, I've personally got a million reasons why I believe in God and his word. But if I had no other reason to believe in his word, there's one reason that would settle it, and it does. The visible fact alone that Israel is back in their land after 2,000 years, just as God promised he would do, is all the proof I need to believe his word. And that is precisely one of the reasons he himself said he was doing it. In Ezekiel 36, he says, And the nation shall know that I am the Lord. How? When I am hallowed in you, Israel, before their eyes. For I will take you from among the nations, gather you out of all the countries, and bring you into the land. This is a perfect, perfect proof text. I, I, don't, I hate the word proof text. But this is what God said he was going to do. One of the reasons he's doing it. He's not doing it because, because Israel is so pure. God says, I do not do this for your sake, O house of Israel, but I do it for my holy name's sake. I hear so many people saying, well, they're not believers. I wasn't a believer before I got saved Israel, before I got saved either. I hear people saying they're not believers, they're not saved. No kidding. But Paul tells us in, in, in Romans that all of Israel will be saved. Read Romans 9, 10, and 11 for the purposes and the plans of God. And God says, I don't do this for your sake, O house of Israel, but for my name's sake I do this. I do this that I might fulfill the word which I swore to your fathers, to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. The purpose of Israel being in the land is to honor the covenant to the fathers. It's to bring to, to literal and complete fulfillment the everlasting Davidic covenant. It's to bring them into the land in order to bring them through their final refining fire and to bring the remnant out of their final and complete national redemption through the time of Jacob's trouble from which he will be delivered from it and then all of Israel will be saved. Folks, God's plan for Israel is not its utter and final destruction. It never was. He says that throughout the scriptures. But his plan is for a great and glorious deliverance and salvation. Even as Jeremiah prophesied so long ago, for I know the thoughts that I think toward you, says the Lord. Thoughts of peace and not of evil to give you a future and a hope. Then you will call upon me. And you will go and pray to me, and I will listen to you. And you will seek me and find me when you search for me with all of your heart. I will be found by you, says the Lord. I will bring you back from your captivity. I will gather you from all the nations and from all the places where I have driven you, says the Lord. And I will bring you to the place from which I caused you to be carried away captive. That's God's eternal plan, my friends. 
That's the plan that God has promised throughout the scriptures to fulfill. God wasn't caught off God in 70 AD. What do, what do you mean to tell me that God didn't know when Jerusalem was destroyed in 70 AD and scattered among the nations? You mean to tell me that he didn't know someday would Israel be back in their own land with their capital in Jerusalem? No, he wasn't caught off God. It was his plan from the very start. It was his purpose, just as he foretold in his word. And it's being done. So let it be written. So let it be done. I wish I had more time with you folks because there's a lot here. But I hope you got something out of this broadcast today. I pray you share it around for those of you on Facebook. And thanks for tuning in to another edition of the Fusion of Heart, Mind, and Soul. Open up the doors. <laughs>